Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord, just to worship Him together? I love that song. That, that song is great. You know, and it, I love being here at the River of Life and seeing what God is doing through His body, uh, which we are His body, right? And we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, this morning. But I was reminded of, uh, Matt was talking about being that, in that refugee camp. And then that just holy roar of people who have experienced the salvation of Jesus crying hallelujah. You know, and I was thinking about something we actually talked in Sunday school, uh, talked about in Sunday school this morning that I just wanted to bring up real quick. You might think of those people in the refugee camp. They don't have anything to say hallelujah about. I mean, from the, in the natural, that's what you would think, right? You would think, I mean, they've been chased out of their home country. You know, they're probably living in, you know, substandard conditions. Am I right, Matt? I mean, I mean, that's an understatement, I'm sure. Uh, right, yes, that's an understatement. And you may think they don't have anything to be shouting hallelujah about except that they've experienced the salvation of the Lord. And we were actually reading in Sunday school out of the book of Lamentations. And out in the book of Lamentations, this is the author is writing during one of the worst times in the, the children of Israel's life. This is during the siege and destruction of Babylon. And so, I mean, things are bad inside the city. I mean, they're probably experiencing a lot of the the same things that they're experiencing in that refugee camp. They're experiencing disease, death, and things like this. But I want to read to you something out of Lamentations that, like I said, I mean, in the natural, if we just look at our circumstances, yeah, we may think there's nothing for them to be shouting hallelujah about. But I want you to look in Lamentations with me real quick. In Lamentations chapter 3, and remember what I said, this very similar situation there uh, under siege in Jerusalem. In uh, Lamentations chapter 3, and starting in verse 21, it says, This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. So he's reminding himself of something. You see, I mean, because in the natural, I mean, things couldn't have gotten any worse. I mean, if he was looking at his circumstances, uh, if in, just by looking at his circumstances, I mean, he didn't have anything to rejoice about, okay? So he's reminding himself of something. He says, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear his yoke in his youth. So, I mean, here's the thing. Those people are experiencing the salvation of the Lord. And now they can, when things don't look good in the natural, they can remind themselves that their hope is in the Lord and His mercies never fail. His loving kindness is new every morning. And so, and we personally can remember that we experience uh, uh, situations, suffering, and grief in our lives. We remind ourselves. That our hope is in the Lord, and He will never let us down. He will never fail us. He is always faithful, and His mercy, is, His loving kindness is another way to put that. His loving kindness is new every morning. So that's just an encouragement to you. And, and, so, and we see that playing out in people's lives who have truly turned to the Lord and are looking to Him rather than allowing their lives to be dictated by their circumstances. So let that just be an encouragement to you uh, in the midst of maybe, I don't know what you're going through, but uh, I, I believe that some people just maybe needed to hear that this morning, but just be encouraged by that. Now this is not even part of the message, that was just for free. I wouldn't even plan on sharing that. It's just We were reading that in Sunday school this morning, and Matt was talking about uh, what was going on in the refugee camp, and I mean, that, hey, that's just, it encourages me, I don't know about you. It, it reminds me that I'm, I shouldn't be looking at my circumstances, but I should be looking to the Lord, and that's where our hope is. And when we look to the Lord, we can be confident that He will never let us down, that His loving kindness uh, is new every morning, So, and His faithfulness. So anyway, uh, well, now on uh, to the message. I don't want to run out of time for the message now. Uh, so we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 this morning. We're going to be talking about 
the gifts of the Spirit. Now, this is a topic, I think, that some, there's a little bit of confusion within the body of Christ on the gifts of the Spirit. And so I want to try to clear up some of those things. Now, this is kind of, in a, in a way, a continuation of, of Andrew's message uh, last Sunday. Um, now, this message, because we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those of us who have put our faith in Christ are now filled with the Spirit. So this message is primarily for Christians, but this can also be a message uh, for those of you who do not know Christ to be uh, in, in encouraged and to be drawn into relationship with Jesus. Now that being said, let me give a brief synopsis of Andrew's message from last week, and then we'll jump in to the message uh, for this week. Many people feel like they have to strive to try to earn salvation, right? That was something you know, that Andrew brought out very well, I think, last week, that many people think that they have to be good enough in, try, in order to try to earn God's salvation. So they're striving, 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 working, 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 trying to earn God's salvation. But that is not the gospel message. That is not good news. If you have to earn your salvation, that is not good news because none of us are capable of earning right standing with God. All right, And so that would not be good news. So that is not the gospel message uh, that is preached in the Bible. The gospel is that we are saved and declared righteous as a result of the finished work of Jesus, which we receive by faith. So, I mean, the work has been done by what Christ did on the cross. We were just singing about it, right? And so when we put our faith in Him, now we're declared righteous and we're saved by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus. We don't have to try to add anything to it. It's complete. So there's no striving about it. We're saved by grace. And then we are united with Christ. You know, Andrew was crossing his fingers, right? So, I mean, that's the kind of relationship that we have with Christ, right? We are united with him in his death, but also in his resurrection. Well, what does that mean for us? We are now dead to sin, to the old way of life, but now we are raised to walk in a new life. We are now new creature in Christ. We're raised in his resurrection. So we're dead to sin, but we're alive to Christ, like it says in Romans chapter 6. Okay, dead to sin, alive to Christ. So we are united with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. So that means when, think about it this way. That means when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, we died right along with him to sins. But when he was raised again, we too were raised right along with him as well. To live a new life in relationship with him. And so we are now, as a result of that, we can have victory. We can be victorious over sin and also death. That old person has died and the new person has arisen. Now some of you may be wondering, how can I be confident of this? How can I be sure that this is my situation, that I've been united with Christ? Well, there's a, a couple of ways that you can... Well, there's one way that we know for a fact that we have been united with Christ. Romans 8, 16, you can turn there, or maybe they'll put it up on the, uh, on the screen. And this will kind of jump, jump us into where we're going to be this morning. Romans 8, 16 tells, tells us that the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So how can we know that we're united with Christ? How can we know that we're a new creature in Christ, that we've died to sin, that we have a new life with Christ? Well, the Holy Spirit now lives inside of us and bears witness with our spirit that you are a new creation in Christ. You see? So the Holy Spirit bears witness. That's how we know that that's the case. We can be confident of our relationship with Christ because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with our spirit. In fact, I was reminded of this passage too in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 tells us that in him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So we've been sealed in our relationship with the Lord, with Christ, by the Holy Spirit. 
And he is our guarantee of this new life, this inheritance that we have as a result of our faith in Christ. Hearing the gospel message that we, I just kind of ran through and then believing it, we are now sealed with the Holy Spirit. So we can know that we have relationship with Jesus. The Holy Spirit now lives inside of me. He now lives inside of you when you have put your faith in Christ. So those who believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit now indwells us, bears witness with our spirit, and also is the guarantee of the promises that have been made. So now the question becomes, what do we do now? What's this Christian life uh, all about? Now that we have this relationship with Christ, now that the Holy Spirit has given us confidence of who we are in Christ, you know, what do we do now? Now, <clears throat> We didn't contribute anything to our salvation. Okay, so, uh, you know, I've, uh, it was saved by grace through faith, right? Well, he here's the thing about it. To walk this Christian life out, we are going to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to live the Christian life. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of us are, are, have the temptation to say, okay, Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my sin. I knew I couldn't do that on my own because I tried it and it didn't work out for me. But I got this. I can, I can now, now that you've saved me, now I can live this Christian life on my own. I've got it. Okay? But no, that's not. Living this Christian life is a result of the power of the Holy Spirit and learning to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to empower us to live this Christian life out. It's but it's more, though, than just coming to church on Sunday and singing a few songs and listening to a sermon. I mean, it's more than just coming to a show, so to speak. The River of Life band is great, and they, you know, but it's more than just you know, coming and listening to, to uh, a show and, and then uh, a sermon. It's more than that. But I feel that many Christians are kind of stuck in this basic holding prep pattern. They're, they're maybe not sure, well, what do I do? Uh, yeah, I come to church on Sundays, and, 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 I, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is now indwelling me, but, but now what do I do? Now, a preacher I, I listen to uh, regularly, um, he, he put it this way. He said that he thinks there's a lot of Christians out there that, who are somewhat bored. Who, who you know, come to, come to church on Sunday mornings, and, and, they, and they sing the songs, but, but then that's really just about it. And so they're, they're a little bit bored. And he, he says that if you really just come here for a show... You can go other places for a better show, you see? Um, but he said, but it's more than just that. We shouldn't, as a Christian, be bored. God has more for you, is what I'm trying to say. It, we've said it all the time here at River Life. God has blessed you to make you a blessing. Now, I heard uh, a pastor say this just this last week. Uh, Tim Keller said, God calls you into a deeper relationship in order to send you out. So he's blessed you to make you a blessing. He's called you in in order to send you out, to be a blessing to those around you. In fact, I was, so to kind of sum up where we're at so far, Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says this, For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But it goes on in verse 10 to say, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So Andrew, I think, established very well Ephesians 2, 8, 9 last week, right? So we're saved by grace through faith. But then now we're going to move on to chapter to verse 10 this morning. Well, well now what? Well, he has prepared good works for us to walk in, and he's empowered us by the Holy Spirit. So that's where we're going to spend our time this morning. In fact, uh, for those of you who take notes, and just so you don't get lost throughout the sermon, let me just kind of summarize the message for you this morning, okay? Just real simply. Each Christian has been uniquely gifted by the Holy Spirit in order to glorify Jesus by furthering and building up his kingdom. So that's, the, that's just the summary of the message. Uh, so each Christian has been uniquely gifted by the Holy Spirit in order to glorify Jesus by furthering and building up his kingdom. So he has more 
for you than just to come here on Sunday mornings and hear some music and listen to a sermon. He has called you in to send you out. He's blessed you to make you a blessing. So let's go to the main passage that will be in this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How He has gifted us in order to glorify Jesus and to build up His kingdom, His body. So let's start in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You for Your Word, Your God. I thank You for the truth that we find in Your Word. I thank You for the guidance that we find in Your Word, Your Lord. Uh, I just pray that You would use us to, to glorify Your name and to further Your kingdom, Dear God. I pray that You would encourage us this morning uh, as we look at how You've gift, gifted us in order to carry out the mission that You've called us to. In Jesus' name I pray. So, I want to answer five questions this morning about the gifts of the Spirit. Like I said, I think there's maybe some confusion, but there was confusion back then. I mean, how does he start this passage out? He says, look, I don't want you to be ignorant of these things. Now, he's not calling them stupid. He's just saying that, hey, you don't know about these things. Okay? You're just, you just without knowledge is what that word means. Okay? So, what we want to do is we want to learn about the way that God has gifted us so that we can walk in it. Right? I mean, that's the, whole, that's the whole point. We want to walk in the way that God has, has gifted us. And so I want to answer five questions uh, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit this morning. So first question is, where do the spiritual gifts come from? The second question we're going to answer is, who has the spiritual gifts? The third question is, what is the purpose of the spiritual gifts? The fourth question, what are the spiritual gifts? And then fifth and lastly, but very practical is how do I use the spiritual gifts? Okay, so let's start with the first question. Where do the spiritual gifts come from? Well, the simple and short answer of that is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts. The third person of the Trinity, the, the Holy Spirit, when we put our faith in Christ, we just establish that He comes and lives inside of us, and then He is the one who gives the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In fact, we just read in those, that passage there that it was by the Spirit and through the Spirit that we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we receive it from the Holy Spirit. Now, let me, this is a whole other sermon, uh, but I think there's even... Uh, maybe we don't um, understand the role of the Holy Spirit as well as maybe we should. But, I mean, there's, that's a whole other uh, sermon. But the, the Holy Spirit, it's, it's, not a, it's not an impersonal force, so to speak, or power. He's a person. He's a person that gives us gifts, you see. And so uh, if we're desirous of these gifts, we can ask the Holy Spirit because he's a person. He will give us these gifts, and he has given us these gifts. Okay, so it's the Holy Spirit give these spiritual gifts. Now, like I was saying earlier, and I just want to reiterate this, if we think that we're going to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit without relying on the Holy Spirit, we're setting ourselves up for failure. Okay, if we think that, okay, if let's just say that I at random 
point to one of the spiritual gifts in, in verses 8 and 9 and say, I'm going to walk in that one. That's the one. But I, and then I, and I'm like, the Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm good. I got this. Then we're setting ourselves up for more striving. Right? Why would we do that? Why would we set ourselves up for more striving when we can just rely on the giftedness that the Holy Spirit has already given us, you see? Okay, so uh, we're not going to set ourselves up for more striving and, and frustration, all right? We're going to rely on the Holy Spirit of God who now dwells in us, and He empowers us to live the Christian life, but also He empowers us to use the, gift of the, Holy, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to further His kingdom and to build up the body of Christ. So this is not about, let me make this clear, this is not about striving and trying to do the work of the kingdom of God on your own power. If you, if you try to do this, you will wear yourself out. Trying to do the work of the kingdom of God on your own power, you will just, you'll burn out. All right? But when you're constantly pulling from the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given you, the, the empowerment that the Holy Spirit has supernaturally given you, then you will not burn yourself out because he's infinite he, he is infinite and he will continue to give the strength that we need so this is about learning then to rely on the holy spirit to rely on the holy spirit not just on the power that he gives but on him personally you see, and then the, then the empowerment comes with learning to rely on the Holy Spirit. You see, uh, He lives inside of you, and then all we need to do is just be obedient to His His guiding. He's empowered us, and then we all all we have to do is just be obedient, knowing that He has empowered us to do those things. So, where do the spiritual gifts come from? They come from the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, through the Spirit. So, the second question: Who has the spiritual gifts? Well, it tells us in verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. You know, you as a believer in Jesus have been given a spiritual gift. Now, you may never, nobody may have ever told you that before, but you you have a spiritual gift. God has supernaturally gifted you to further his kingdom because you are a believer in Jesus. So he's given to each one, each Christian, every Christian has a unique spiritual gift that we can use to further the kingdom of God and to build up the body of Christ. I think a lot of us had this kind of mentality when we come to faith in Jesus like, and I just made it in the back door of the kingdom of God. But, I, but we, we kind of have in the back of our mind, like, God can't really use me, though. You know, I mean, that's kind of the, I mean, I had that mentality for a long time, you know, uh, that, yeah, I'm just, I'm barely making it. You know, they were about to shut the door, and I just, I squeezed in, you see. You know, so we've come to faith in Christ, all right, um, and we know we we're confident of that. We know who we are in Christ, but we think, well, God really can't use me. And so... With that kind of mentality, that, what happens is we start to sit back as a spectator to the kingdom of God rather than a participant in the kingdom of God. You see, but he's not called us to be spectators. He's called us to be participants in the body of Christ. So we're not going to sit back with that mentality like that God can't really use me and I'll just watch everybody else and, and you know, I'll even, I'll even applaud them like, yeah, I'm really glad God's doing that in your life. But, you know... There's really nothing going on uh, for me. You know, God can't really use me. But that, we don't need to have that mentality uh, because he, I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. You, as a Christian, have been gifted by the Holy Spirit for the work of furthering the kingdom of God and building up the body of Christ. You have been supernaturally gifted, okay? So each and every Christian. So don't get this mentality, the spectator, the spectator mentality. Be a participant knowing that you have been gifted by the Holy Spirit. So, the, the, the third question. What is the purpose of the spiritual gifts? Now, you've heard me say it several times already. To glorify Jesus by furthering His kingdom and building up His body. Okay, That's what the spiritual gifts are for, is to glorify Jesus and to 
further his kingdom, so to, to spread the gospel message of Jesus Christ, and then to build up his body, the, the body of Christ, the, the church of God. Um, the Holy Spirit's delight, first uh, and foremost, is to glorify what Jesus has done for us. In fact, John 15, 14, Jesus says it this way. And he's talking about the, the role of the Holy Spirit after he leaves and the Holy Spirit comes. Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So one of the primary goals of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus and what he did. His, uh, the gospel message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and the salvation that he provides to us. So, in fact, uh, uh, verse 3 that we just read, look at verse 3 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit it, it even allows us to say that Jesus is Lord. All right, it enables us to, to make Jesus Lord of our lives. Okay, he's the one who empowers us, like I said earlier, to live this Christian life and make Jesus uh, our Lord. So it's, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that we're even able to make Jesus Lord. And you know, one of the be- I, was, I was thinking about this, one of the best ways that we can glorify Jesus is to share what he did for us in, the, in his death, burial, and resurrection with other people. I mean, that's how we can show that, that we truly Believe in that we are truly, uh, you know, excited about and glorify and praise Jesus by, by telling other people what he has done. He has called each, and, each of us, it tells us later on in, in, in uh, Corinthians, he's called each of us to the ministry of reconciliation. He's given each and every Christian that, that ministry to glorify Jesus by telling others about what he has done. And so uh, in Ephesians 4.12 it goes on to say this, about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It says, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave gifts. So the Holy Spirit came after Jesus ascended into heaven, right? And why did he give those gifts? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So he has equipped you for the work of ministry. Or you've been equipped by the Holy Spirit for the work of ministry and edifying the body of Christ. Again, let me say this. Who are these saints that he's talking about? Well, each and every person that's put their faith in Christ. Now, a lot of people, I think, when we hear the word saint, we're like, that's not me. I'm, not, I'm no saint. Yes, you are. If you put your faith in Christ, it's a, like Andrew talked about last week, it's a finished work. You are now a saint, right? You, are now, you are, are now in right standing with God. You are now holy and righteous, not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done. And so since you are a saint, you have been equipped for the work of ministry. It's not, and it should never be this way, it's not only up to the preacher at the church, or, or, or you know, uh, to, to be involved in the work of ministry. Each and every one of us are to be involved in the work of ministry. Because, again, we've been equipped. We're saints of God and we've been equipped uh, for the work of ministry. So the, the spiritual gifts uh, help us to spread the gospel and to unify the body of Christ. Now, let's move on to the next question. What are the spiritual gifts? Now, there are several lists of spiritual gifts throughout the New Testament. Okay, and we just read one. In fact, let's go back and read that. 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. So we see uh, some, some of the spiritual gifts listed here in 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. You know, it's kind of hard to use them if you don't know what, what they are, so to speak. Um, but let's, let's look at the spiritual gifts and we'll talk about them a little bit. So it says, The word of wisdom, Right through the, through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge. So we got the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, through the same Spirit. And then verse 9, and then faith by the same Spirit, gifts of healings, and then the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and then interpretation of tongues. So we have there several of the spiritual gifts, gifts listed. Now if we flip over just a page, 
uh, to verse 28 in 1 Corinthians 12, there's another list here. Which some of these are actually repeated, but look at verse 28. And it says, God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophet, third teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. So there, there's a, another list of spiritual gifts there in verse 28. Now, hold your place there, and I want you to, to go and look at these with me because I want you to know where they are. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 is another list. Romans chapter 12 and verses 6 through 8. So it says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So we have, again, prophecy is mentioned. Ministry or serving. That's another way. When we hear the word ministry a lot of times. And, and I don't know about you, but I usually think of the minister, right? You know, like the, the preacher. But this word ministering really just means to serve, to be a servant, okay? To, to serve other people. And so whenever you come across, maybe it's in your translation, it says ministry. Um, but I mean, that's just serving, okay? Uh, and so we have ministry or serving, teaching, encouraging. That's what exhor exhortation is. It's just encouraging. Giving or contributing. And then leadership and mercy. So there's another list of the spiritual gifts. Now in Ephesians 4.11, and you can just write this one down, uh, but there's listed what many uh, people call the five-fold ministry, which we've already really listed. These are uh, Again, gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, but they're also offices in the church. So you've got apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Okay, so those are the, the gifts of, uh, again, gifts of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 4.11. Now, 1 Peter 4.11 also has a list of gifts. Basically, you have speaking and serving gifts. Okay, and so you, again, you can go look at that one, 1 Peter 4.11. You have speaking and then ministering gifts. Okay, so it's kind of divided into, uh, in fact, since I have it up there, let's, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory and the power forever and ever, amen. So again, we have, we have speaking and then we have serving. Through what the, the strength that God provides and in the words that God provides. Again, we're not relying on our own power. We're relying on the strength and then the words that God gives us. In fact, when Jesus sent out his disciples, uh, you know, he said, don't worry about what you're going to say. He said, I I'll give you the words when you need them, right? And that, I mean, I'm summarizing there, but I mean, that's basically uh, what he said. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Now, there's some debate on this last uh, set of spiritual gifts that um, I'm going to mention. But uh, in 1 Corinthians 7, in verse 7, now, 1 Corinthians 7, the Apostle Paul talks about celibacy and marriage. But in uh, 1 Corinthians 7, and since we're already there, we'll, we'll look at this. But 1 Corinthians 7, and verse 7 says this. For I wish that all men were even as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in, this, in that manner. So what, what, are the, what, what does he mean by one in this manner and one in that manner? He's talking about celibacy and marriage. And so he's, he's saying that, you know, and he calls them a gift from God. Okay, so anyway, uh, those are some of the list of the spiritual gifts in the New Testament. Let me say this, though. This is not, and most commentators I went through and read as I was preparing for this, this is not an exhaustive list. Okay, this, this is not an exhaustive list. This is not the only ways, I mean, that the Holy Spirit can use you for the, the work of the kingdom of God, okay? Um, and then a lot of these gifts like helps and administration and encouragement, lots of different gifts fit into those categories, don't they? Okay, I mean, so 
so there's, this is not to limit, so to speak, what the Holy Spirit can do in your life, all right? How the Holy Spirit can use you. So this is not an exhaustive list that is given to us in uh, the, the New Testament of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, there are other spiritual gifts, uh, and, and so, like I said, let's, in fact, let's talk about some examples, Okay, let's, let's talk about some examples of using some of the gifts listed above. Remember now, these are supernatural abilities that are given by the Holy Spirit. You know, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about some of the spiritual gifts, like encouragement, for example. Some people just have the supernatural ability to come up to you and just say the right thing, and you're just lit on fire. You know, uh, I mean, they, they know exactly what to say to encourage you uh, in the Lord, right? Uh, and, and, and they just, I mean, they just have that supernatural ability uh, that God has given them, that God is uniquely gifted with them. They can put their arm around somebody that's maybe going through a hard time, and, and, and the Holy Spirit just gives them what to say at that time to, en- to encourage us in our walk with the Lord. You know, but not all of us have this exact same, uh, sp- these exact same spiritual gifts, but some people are just, have the supernatural ability, so to speak. You know, I, I've said this before, but I believe that it, we just read in Romans chapter 12 that God has supernaturally gifted some people the ability to make money to contribute to the furthering of the kingdom of God. You see? Because, I mean, like, like Matt was saying, I mean... Th- to pay for those pastors to come to the conference and then, you know, to pay for their meals and so on. I mean, that costs money. But I think that God, now he's called all of us into giving, right? I mean, all of us, that you know, he's called all of us into tithing. But I think that some people are able, uh, you know, because of the giftedness of the Holy Spirit, they can just, they know how to make money and guess what? And then they give liberally. They give liberally. So they, they give to the furthering of the kingdom of God. And again, I believe that's, a, that's just a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit, and they're just walking in it, you see? Like that person that encourages other people, just putting their arm around somebody. You've got you to be obedient. You see somebody kind of down, and you want to encourage them. You've got to be obedient by just going up to them and talking to them to begin with, right? Or, or you've got you to get out the, you know, the, the checkbook, so to speak, and write the check if you're, if you're going to walk in the giftedness that the Holy Spirit has given you. He's given you the ability, and He's empowered you to do it, and, and now we just need to be obedient to it, you see? Now some, you know, not everybody has the same spiritual gift. The gifts complement one another. They're, the Holy Spirit, it says in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, it's the Holy Spirit who gives the gifts. So he gives each one to, uh, he, verse 11 says, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. He, the Holy Spirit knows where we can be best used to further the kingdom of God within the body of Christ. And so he gives us those gifts that we can use to do that very thing. So we can complement one another. Some people think that there's a priority, so to speak, to the gifts. And so that they get this, this mindset like, you know, my gift's not that important. You know, God, my gift, so just because I can't get up like, like Brother Dave and give a, a message to 2,000 pastors, you know, because I can't do that, because I, you know, I don't have that, you know, I'm not comfortable, you know, I get uh, nervous standing in front of 10 people talking, you know, you get, and so God can't really use me. You know, or, or, you know I'm not a teacher, yeah, God really can't use me. Let me give you uh, an illustration that really drove this point home to me that each and every person's giftedness is right where God wants us and can be used and we complement one another. So I was thinking about Franklin Graham. He's the son of Billy Graham. You, y'all remember Billy Graham, the, the uh, evangelist that preached to... They estimate that Billy Graham preached to more people uh, in his lifetime than just about anybody in human history. All right. Well, Franklin Graham has continued the work of his father. So and, and he just had a, uh, a big evangelistic rally in New, the New England state. And thousands of people came to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some of them for the first time. And you'd think that in New England, in, in, a, in the United States, that that would be kind of crazy. But, but uh, I, I, my dad went up there. He said, there's some people that just heard the gospel for the first time. Anyway, 
Let's just say, though, Franklin Graham has a word from the Lord, right? He's walking in his spiritual gift. And so he's preparing his, his message. I mean, he's going to preach the, the gospel. And, and so he's preparing his message. He's all ready. But let's say that somebody within the Graham Crusade organization who has the gift of sound systems. Now, that's a gift, okay? There's, there is a spiritual gift of sound systems. And, but they decide that because I can't get up and preach an inspired word of the Lord in front of thousands of people, God can't really use me. I'm not that important in the kingdom of God. And so they stayed home. They didn't come to the crusade and set up the sound system, uh, you know, the, what God had gifted them to do. And so, when Franklin Graham comes up to the pulpit to preach the message... And he starts, starts talking and nobody can hear him. Because somebody thought, well, I'm not that important. And I can't be used by God. My, gift, my giftedness is not that, as important as, as, say, Franklin Graham's. And so God can't use me. That's not the case. See, but when the person with the gift of sound systems walks in what God has, has given them to do, and then Franklin Graham is walking what God has given him to do, now the, the word of the Lord, the gospel message is, is preached, you see, and, and people hear the good news of Jesus Christ, and we compliment one another as the body of Christ, you see. So, you know, and there's so many more. I could give a, t- a bunch of examples. Let's, let's, take, let's bring it home for a second. Let's take the greeters out in front. I mean, there's some people who have the gift of hospitality. They could just smile, and you just feel at home. You know, I mean, or they can say, you know, good morning and smile, and you're just like, man, I'm at home, you know. And that is so important. Let's think about somebody who's a, who's a visitor to River Life for the first time. And they're not used to maybe coming to a church this big. This is a kind of big church for around this area, right? And so they're feeling really nervous, you know. But this is their first time to come to River Life, and they're, they're a little bit uptight and a little bit nervous, you know. And, uh, but they walk in, and the greeter is there. To, you know, Miss, Miss Becky, you know, I mean, she has that smile on her face and, and she, she says good morning to them. And, and they're like, I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go. Well, let me help you, you know, because we, you know, they, we don't maybe not say this because we love you, you know. But that's the, that's the mentality, right? We make them feel at home. So now when they come into the service, they feel more at ease. And they're now prepared to hear the message, you see. And it's going to fall on good soil, right? And so uh, they, can, they can hear the good news of Jesus Christ, the, of, of the grace of Jesus. But if the greeters all thought, well, I'm not that important, and they just stayed home, you see, now they're going to come in uptight, uncomfortable, and, and, and maybe you just not be able to receive like we could. You see what I'm saying? We're all part of the body of Christ. Let me just summarize it this way. Never discount what God has given you to do. Never say that I'm not important in the kingdom of God. God can't use me. In fact, we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit of God. You've been supernaturally gifted by the Holy Spirit of God himself. How in the world could it be insignificant if God himself is giving you this gift? You see? I mean, how in the world could it be insignificant? He has placed you in the body of Christ where he wants you, where you can be used. And so never discount what God has given you to do. We compliment one another. In fact, you know, if you read on, and I encourage you to do this this afternoon, uh, as you think about this message, read on to verses 12 to the end of the chapter. It talks about this. The Apostle Paul compares the body of Christ to an actual body, and if one part of the body stops working, that's going to affect every other part of the body. As a, you know, as a biology teacher, I, I love to talk about this, but how every part of the body is, is, interacts with each other, right? And if one part stops, wor- stop, part stops working, it affects everything else. Well, that's true in the body of Christ as well. Okay? Um, and so, you know, as we think about that. Now, here's a question I often get when we're talking about the spiritual gifts. Okay, I have a spiritual gift, but I want, I want more. You know, and that's a good place to be. Like, I want more of the, the, the spiritual gifts that, that God gives. Well, let me just say this. Uh, and, and so how do I go about that? Well, I, I would say be faithful with what God has given you to do. When we're faithful with what God has, has, got, God has gifted us with, then he, He'll give us more. And we can start to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give us more. 
You see? And, I mean, he's uh, a generous God, I mean, he wants to give gifts, good gifts to his children, right? And so when we're being faithful with what he's given us to do, and we start to ask for more, I believe that he'll give those to us. Uh, so, I mean, he is, you know, Matthew chapter 7 kind of tells us this, that Jesus says, if we ask, he'll be given to you. Um, and in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents kind of lays out this principle, right? When we're walking in what he's given us to do, we're being faithful with what he's called us into, then he'll give us more. So last but not least, last question. This is just some kind of some practical application. We've kind of talked about this a little bit, but how do I use the spiritual gifts? Now there's probably some of you out there that weren't even aware that you had a spiritual gift until this morning. You know, until, you, know you, you just didn't know that you had a spiritual gift, that, that God had, had given you a spiritual gift by the Holy Spirit. Um, or... There's some of you out there that maybe knew that you had that God would, the Holy Spirit would give us spiritual gifts, but you're just not sure what yours is. You say you just weren't sure what what is my spiritual gift. Well, how can we find out what God has gifted us with? Here's my recommendation to you: start praying and asking God for an opportunity to use your spiritual gift. Start praying and asking God for an opportunity to use your spiritual gift. And you know what's going to start happening? God's going to start opening doors and, and making opportunities for you to use your spiritual gift. Now, we've got to be paying attention. If I, I'm challenging you this morning. Start praying that prayer. If you're not sure what God has given you, what the, the giftedness that God has given you, start praying that prayer this morning that God would give you an opportunity to use that spiritual gift. But beware. When you start praying that prayer, opportunities will start coming your way. So pay attention, all right, because they're coming. All right, God will start providing opportunities for you to use your spiritual gifts because that's his desire, right, is that, that, he, that the kingdom of God be furthered and that it be built up, right? So he'll start opening doors for you and opportunities. Um, so we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and then... Just be, being obedient to what God has called us to do. Okay? Just being obedient what he, to walk in what He has empowered us to do. And then the other just practical thing is many times, and this is how it worked out for me personally, so, so I know this is the case, but many times other people in the body of Christ might see something in you first before you ever see it in yourself. And they'll call you into it. You see, and that is one of the opportunities. They'll say, I see this in you, and, and I'm going to call you into it. So, you know, I see that you have the ability to just put people at ease. Would you be on our greeting team? I see that you have the ability to, to comfort crying babies. Would you work in our nursery, you know? I see that you have the ability to teach the, the Word of God. Would you lead one of our Sunday school classes, you see? And they'll call you into it. And then, then it's just a matter of us just being obedient and saying, Okay, God, I'm taking this as a call from you because they have the Spirit in them, right? And so, and so you calling this out of me so that I can be used for the kingdom of God. And I believe that all of us do have a desire as a as someone who has put their faith and trust in Christ, I believe all of us do have a desire to be used for the kingdom of God, right? I mean, we do. And so, um, so we want to walk in that. And that is one of the reasons that I love being here at the River of Life. Because you have opportunities. You have opportunities to use your spiritual gifts. You know, um, to be on the greeting team, to, to work in the nursery, to, ch to work at children's church, to work with the toddlers, you know, to share the love of God, um, to, to go in, uh, into the mission field, all right? All, all of these, to, to give, to, all of these opportunities that you have here at the River of Life to use your spiritual giftedness. And it doesn't just have to be here at the River of Life, but you should be used. We should be using these at, at home with our family and in our, in our community and, and at work, right? So God can use us wherever we are. And again, it's not about striving. It's not about trying to, to try my best to use my spiritual gifts. No, it's about learning to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit and, and then stepping out into it. But guess what? We can step into it confidently knowing that we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. 
right? So, I mean, we don't have to, you know, t- timidly step into it. We can, we can walk in it confidently. And so my hope this morning is that you've been encouraged, that your eyes have been opened, that you realize that, that you, you are a part of the body of Christ and that God wants to use you to further his kingdom and then to build up his body and to glorify Jesus by sharing the gospel. It's not for just a super spiritual select few. All right, If you get that kind of mentality, you will be bored. But God's got so much more for you. I mean, we should never. I mean, we shouldn't ever be uh, bored as a Christian. We we should never get that spectator mentality, but rather realize that He wants us to be participants in furthering the kingdom of God. And guess what? That's exciting. That's not boring. That's going to keep you on the edge of your seat. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's going to keep you rejoicing. All right, that's going to uh, keep you uh, excited, and God will use you. And, and I look forward, and I, and I see it. I see it all over the place already, and I, and I look forward to seeing what God is going to do through the people here, His body in, at the River of Life, as we step into what He has called us to. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank You and praise You uh, that You have uh, gifted us, dear God, that You've empowered us to live this Christian life, dear God, but also to to further your kingdom. We just thank you that you've called us into a deeper relationship with you to go out, dear God, and to to do the work of ministry, dear Lord. I just uh, pray that if there's anyone here that is not sure of their spiritual giftedness, dear God, that you would start to give them opportunities, dear Lord, and then that we would be obedient and and that we could confidently walk in what you've called us to do, knowing that, that you have given us the ability. And we just thank you and praise you for all that you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.